Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we're going to play around with Amazon Code Whisperer now that it's out and it's free. And we're going to solve a simple leak code problem with it. Um, for those of you who are unaware, Amazon Code Whisperer is an AI coding companion. It auto completes or makes suggestions to code as you're writing it. So it'll suggest the next line, maybe the next five, 10, 15 lines of code for you based on what you've typed out um, and the rest of your document. Now, if this sounds familiar, it's because uh, GitHub, of course, has their own version called Copilot, which we've talked about in the past. Now, I love, I love GitHub Copilot. It was fantastic to have around, and um, and it was really helpful. Uh, not really to solve problems. I don't think it's there yet where it's replacing programmers, you know, solving all your problems, but it got rid of a lot of tedious things. So, um, you know, you always have the format for making, a, say, an Ajax or post command uh, ready to go without remembering the finer details of it. Uh, I find it very helpful because I, I have, you know, five or six variables and I'm trying to do things uh, that are kind of repetitive, that all follow the same format. Um, these AI code generators just give you a suggestion. You might fix up one or two lines, but takes out a lot of that tedious, bad programming type of thing. But Copilot went paid. 10 bucks a month, even for individuals. And it, even though I think that's well worth it if you do a lot of programming, it was right there on the fence for me and I never really made the switch over. Amazon, giving it out for free at the individual level. Now, obviously you don't get the organizational enterprise type of management and tool sets. Uh, you are also getting fewer code scans, but the plain code suggestion um, feature set is completely available. They're not giving you shortened, simplified suggestions. You're getting the full experience for free. So um, I, I really uh, wanted to try this out and see how it goes. So um, I have it all set up. I've been playing around with it for a month and a half. I'll talk about some of my uh, thoughts as we solve a problem. But setting up, um, you just download the uh, AWS toolkit. So if you click here, um, the toolkit has you know all of AWS's uh, various platforms and services, but down here under developer tools, you get code whisper. Um, you just log in um, and you resume or start auto suggestions. Um, it is limited uh, to VS Code, JetBrains, and you know AWS stuff, but you have fewer options to choose from. Uh, for me, not so important. I do everything in VS Code. I think a lot of people are using VS Code now, but that is a uh, area that Code Whisper can catch up to Copilot a little bit on. Um, so let me just show you really quickly how this works. Um, let's say I want to define you know a function. Let's say let's call it print. Uh, what do we? Well it suggests print matrix. Now it's basing this on nothing else, so it's giving you a shot in the dark, but if you had uh, a comment, um, print a concat of the various strings in the array, I'm just gonna move this here, um, it may have a different suggestion for you. Now you can click tab to accept, or um, escape. So if it does horribly and has nothing related and you just don't want to see it, you can click escape and you can keep typing concat. Um, if it's not suggesting anything um, or, or going a bit slow, you can click Alt C. So let's go print. Uh, Alt C to run it manually. Now in this case, it doesn't really know what you wanna do. And for the most part, it's quick enough so that you don't need to manually call it. But in certain situations, um, it, it may not be trying to find a suggestion for you. 
Now, let's say we don't really like this one. Um, you can click left and right to see different suggestions. In this case, it's only giving us three uh, suggestions. Um, sometimes there's only one. Uh, when it's a very clear cut, um, you know, print the addition of two numbers, there may only be um, one appropriate or one guess from Code Whisper. But I've seen something like five different suggestions. If you um, call it a little bit differently, print a, you know, um, print array, it, it might stimulate it to print something else. Um, Something that I did like about Copilot that I don't like so much about Code Whisper and limits the utility is that Code Whisper has a number of languages, I think 10 or 12 coding languages, and it just stops. It, it, it's not even going to try if you have it set to something else. So for example, um, an HTML file, um, I might try Alt-C and it'll say HTML is not currently supported by Code Whisper, so it just gives up. Whereas Code uh, GitHub Copilot uh, generally tries to make an effort, even if you have, say, a plain text file, it will try and get it horrifically wrong at times. But um, I, I kind of appreciate it because uh, HTML, it does do uh, a little bit to try and get it running. Anyways, let's get started with the problem here. Um, given a string path, which is an absolute path starting with a slash to a file or directory in a Unix style file system, convert it to the simplified canonical path. Um, you're taking one string, turning it into another. Uh, in a Unix file system, a period refers to the current directory, a double period refers to the directory up a level, and any multiple consecutive slashes i.e. dash dash, are treated as a single slash. For this problem, any other format of period such as dot 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 are treated as file or directory names. Now they give you this handy list of what uh, things you should do. The canonical path should have the following format. The path starts with a single slash. Any two directories are separated by a single slash. The path does not end with a trailing slash. The path only contains directories on the path from the root directory to the target file or directory. No period or double periods. Return the canonical path. We're going to use Python, um, and I'm just going to copy and paste it into Visual Studio. OK, um, let me see here. I hope this makes sense. Uh, we're going to just input the rules one at a time. Um, Split the path. Uh, that's not really what I want to do. Um, remove any trailing slash at the end of path. And we might. Perfect. Uh, our strip. And again, um, if I gave it this whole um, change path from a an absolute path to a canonical path, it might give us an answer here. So it might give you the here. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Alt C. Um, pick the right line, of course. Remove any trailing slash. Um, path equals. Um, I was hoping that it might be able to do this all at once. So let's try this one more time. Let's see and give multiple suggestions. Not bad, actually. Um, OK, let's go back to what we were doing before. We're going to give it each rule, uh, remove the initial slash. Wait, uh, ensure the path begins with an initial slash path equals nope that's not what I wanted if this seems about right okay um I 
length path. <coughs> Um, I'm just going to go with a shortened version here. So, um, I'm just worried that these might conflict. If there's only one slash, you know, root directory, then we don't want to strip the trailing, um, slash. Okay. Uh, okay. What are the other rules? Um, double periods. Remove any double period uh, okay it's going with the double slashes alt C no let's go next line alt C here we go remove um, periods remove periods from path. Again, Alt-C. I want to see where it's going here. Okay. I like this one. And you can see that these are not perfect solutions, and I am trying to build it out as I go here. Um, we're replacing these period directories, and I think um, the order might make a difference, but let's uh, return path and see how we do here. Um, so let me make a comment here. Uh, number one, uh, it isn't as consistent. You can see that I had to manually Alt-C and ask for a suggestion. Uh, if my memory serves me well, um, it used to be with Copilot a little more uh, frequent. Uh, Copilot tends to be a bit faster as well. And, and that's a really frustrating part. Um, I don't like I want to just see suggestions constantly ready to go and Copilot does it better. Now it's done quite well here um, and this is about the extent I wanted to show you guys how a workflow might look like but the other major question and one that has a wide spectrum online when I was googling is how Code Whisper stacks against Copilot um, in terms of the quality of the suggestions. And I was quite surprised. Um, some people are saying Code Whisper is just garbage in comparison, whereas um, some are saying it's quite even. Um, I, I stand somewhere in the middle of the spectrum. At, at no point, I think, does anyone say Copilot is worse than Code Whisper, but there is a spectrum of how well Code Whisper does. And if you look at the latest, April 2023, um, I'm looking at Lucas Simon's blog, and he's done a number of tests, and you can see similar, same, near identical, um, similar, near identical. Like the, it, it stacks up very, very well um, in a series of tests that are designed to. Uh, ask it to solve problems or to name or to do tedious tasks. Um, and I, I tend to trust that over my gut in that he thinks that it stacks fairly similar. Um, you can see he has some of the same problems. Uh, speed, uh, Code Whisper seems to be a bit slower. I find it a little less polished and a little less intuitive. Um, and also languages that uh, he's listed out. But for what it's worth, I find that the suggestions weren't as good, but we're fairly close. So for a free generator, especially for my use case, which is to get rid of the tedious, like I, I, I am not asking even Copilot to try and solve complex problems. It just doesn't work that well. It's a good kind of starting point, but I find it easier to try and figure it out myself than to rework through someone else's code. Um, if you're doing something tedious that's fairly systematic, uh, you can see how this saves a bit of time. 
Um, for me, the real problem is, let's say we had these simplified paths and I wanted to do things with one and three and one and three and do it very much a pattern. Um, both Copilot and Code Whisper, and Code Whisper does this just fine, recognizes the patterns in your text and, and tries and gives you uh, text without a lot of manipulation. So all in all, um, I still think Code Whisper has a little bit to catch up to uh, Copilot, uh, and I'm thinking Copilot months ago, so uh, it may have gotten even better, but I still have to give it a strong thumbs up because it's free. It's free. Oh, uh, one last thing I wanted to mention is uh, I, I mean, personally, I don't look at this very much. I don't do a lot of complex code, but um, reference tracking is something Amazon is looking into. And they talk about how it's trained on their code base, uh, which is really, really helpful if you're uh, in that controversy uh, and, and you're worried about the ethics of uh, Copilot being trained on all this open source code, all of this license code, um, Amazon seems to care a little bit more. I'm sure they're both uh, at fault, but Amazon cares a little bit, is trying to take more steps, it seems like, to, to address those ethical, uh, maybe even legal concerns. Anyways, uh, I hope that was helpful. Uh, do give it a shot. It's free, takes no time at all to, to install it and get it running so you can be the judge yourself. Anyways, I will see you folks next week with another episode of Unscripted Coding. Thanks for watching.